Good morning, everyone. I'm deciding to make uh, a video while I prepare my pre-workout drink and prepare morning breakfast when we come back from the gym. We usually do our post-workout meal and then head to work. Because um, I, I wanted to dedicate a little bit more time to the topic that... Um, it's pretty hot right now, in spite of how the world is falling apart and we're the brinks of World War III and all the the crazy things that are happening in our world. Um, one of the crazy things that is happening in our world is that women's sport is literally being abolished and destroyed by a human being who, you know, I believe has all the right in the world to transition to do whatever they want to do because we are all you know owners of our destiny whether it turns out as a disaster or whether it turns out as something great we are all you know in charge of our destiny but when our destiny you know invades in other people when our destiny destroys the lives of others then you know it's is it such a great destiny i mean i don't know we all have to find that out as a we navigate life and, you know, lead our course in action. But this human being, the swimmer, the athlete, who swam as a male athlete for years, you know, and has only been on O estrogen for a year. Um, this right here is a, as I, and you're probably wondering, what is he putting? What precaution is he creating? It's a pre-workout powder and a... Um, a creatine HCI, which is less bloating and less discomfort on your digestive system and your stomach in it. It's got all the great things as creatine does, but without the negative side effects. Um, some people do react to creatine differently. Anyway, so this person who is beating women left, right, and center, might as well be clobbering them like the other trans athlete that used to you know, compete against women, claiming they were one themselves and got the great pleasure of, you know, hurting women. This person um, that everyone's trying to parade, you know, there's a lot of pros and cons to the, uh, the debate. Some people are for this person. Other people are obviously um, are against it. Linda and I are very much against it. Um, One year, okay, one year, and they think that they could, and I don't know why, they, why these institutions are allowing this to take place, they think they compete against women, win, and by the way, they're not putting their full force effort because they could be breaking records, but they know if they did that, it would bring even more attention, it would actually demonstrate how wrong this is, how these organizations are allowing this to take place and praising this person, you know, is, is beyond me. But look at the world we're living in. Everything's upside down. I wanted to point out, for those that are paying attention, and uh, just grabbing oatmeal protein powder. Today I'm going to use the vanilla. Usually it's a plant-based protein powder. I um, wanted to point this out, and, and let's see if people are really paying attention. Um, for those of you who are trans, truly trans, because, you know, and I know, I know, I've detransitioned, and I've struggled with my thing back and forth, and frankly, the more I think about it, I have really had a disdain uh, against being trans because of what I was seeing, you know, what, what I saw was taking place, what this community was becoming. Um, I didn't want any part of it. So, you know, along with other reasons why I detransitioned and dealing with all sorts of my own baggage and demons in the closet and everything else, um, it's becoming more and more shameful to identify as trans. Right, and I know many of you could understand that, and many of you that are the woke crowd um, do not. But I'm all over the place with this. But 
if you've been paying attention, you would understand that when you transition the first, I like to say the first five years, right? You're really concerned on how you look. Um, your dysphoria is on a high alert. You know, you don't really want to be seen out too much. And it's kind of like a, you know, testing the waters and you're really, really concerned with you know, are you passing and all these things? Well, I didn't notice that this human being has no, they don't care that they look like some sort of, you know, uh, what's the word, uh, the, the old time giants, Nephilim, right, Nephilim, um, or that they don't really pass as a female, um, They've only been on oestrogen for one year. Their concern is to beat women. They went from swimming in the male's team and now they're in the female team only having been on oestrogen for one year. Hasn't really fully transitioned if you think about it. But everyone's so concerned on being PC and being polite and loving and accepting. And they're just kind of like watching the emperor with no clothes and clapping and not understanding what is really going on here. This person is not even trans, in my opinion. They don't appear to have much dysphoria parading around the shoulders and the height and, and the lats that, you know, lats, shoulders, hands. Lots of advantage, lung capacity. But they don't, they don't care that they're not looking as feminine as they might want to look. I mean, most people, most women, I know not all women are feminine, but, you know, most trans women that transition want to have some sort of, you know, pride about their looks. That's part of, the whole thing, usually, right? Not them. No, they're just wanting to win. And up there going, oh, I'm ignoring all the negative comments. Most trans women would be in tears, would be like crawling into a hole and not wanting to go out again until they pass better, until they look better, until they present as the female they're wanting to present as. Call me crazy, but, you know, that's what it appears to me. Anyway, this that I'm putting into the oatmeal, I'll put a half a cup of oatmeal, quick oats. And this is a uh, collagen powder to try to keep, you know, the skin, hair, muscles and everything looking healthy and staying young as much as you can possibly do that as we age. Um, this is, as I said earlier, vegan protein. Put a little scoop of that. Breakfast of champions. So, beating women. You know, if you want to transition, by all means, please do. We we all have to do things that makes us feel comfortable. But if your transition is going to impinge on other people and hurt other people, in this case, they are hurting women's sports. For all you women out there that are cheering this athlete on, do you even think about what it's doing to your kind sport, women's sports, how it is destroying it, how it is taking away any chance a future young woman who wants to be a swimmer may have. If all these trans athletes, quote unquote, decide to enter women's sport, what is going to happen to women's sports? Not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. I've been going on this this thing give me the minutes anyway so I put some water on this thing now you can't really see much because it only has X amount of angle but I just figured I wanted to make a video while I did this in the morning instead of sitting in the sofa like I usually do just to give you a little change of scenery and I just kind of like blend all that in there I don't fully prepare it because now I put this, I'll cut up an apple and um, 
banana and some blueberry and raspberries and I'll stick it in the refrigerator when we come back from the gym and then you know I'll add coconut flakes and some nuts some flaxseed um, I add these things called Zante currants yummy stuff and doesn't have anything but the actual Zante currants because when you buy like the cranberries that are loaded with sugar and they put all sorts of stuff in it, which, you know, the least amount of additives that you put in your body, the better chance you stand in not getting some sort of, you know, disorder or whatever else that we can get. You know, being, being human this day and age is really hard. I know we're not being chased by some saber-toothed tiger and stuff like that, but the constant non-stop stress, not good, you know, really not good. Anyway, you know, if people talk about this, it's considered phobic, hateful. It's the truth, and we can't shy away from truth. We can't take one individual and destroy the rights of other individual, a small minority, and try to impose the rights of that one small minority on the entire world, force the entire world to go against their morality, to against their beliefs, against what they think. You know, it's wrong, and we need to stop this. What is wrong with humanity this day and age? You know, it's, it's really, really, really sad. I mean, yeah, dysphoria is awful for some people. You know, it, it ranges in, in different levels and you know, stuff like that, but you can't destroy everybody else's life because of your dysphoria. It'll come back and haunt you. It will, I promise you. You know, you may feel and think one way, you know, when we first transition, it's like a derailed train just going forward, not realizing that eventually it's going to crash. Because eventually, all trains that are derailed or heading, you know, nonstop crash. So, you got to think before you do. You got to understand what are the limitations. And the limitations of doing something like this is like, you don't get to compete against women if you're a trans woman. You don't hear the big hoopla with trans guys competing because <laughs> you're never going to see a trans guy win in a sports-related event that other men are competing in. You know? The chances of that happening are very slim to none. I remember seeing this one trans guy who had, who thought he could be in the Mr. Olympia. That's dreaming, you know, it's nice to dream, but there is no way. Because even female bodybuilders, that take some auxiliary, boy, they take some stuff. They get big, yeah, but they'll never be able to compete against a man in the Mr. Olympia. They have women's competition. Men compete against men and women compete against women. And some of these female bodybuilders, boy, they would leave a trans guy in the dusk because they take other stuff and they get really big. But still, even as big as they get, they could never beat a guy in the Mr. Olympia. Even if they transitioned and became a trans guy, they wouldn't be able to beat Mr. Olympia or whoever it is competing against. It's just... Look, biology is real, folks. I know we don't like it. I know we wish we could change it, but we can't. You know, we transition to try to alleviate dysphoria, to try to lead as healthy life as you possibly can, you know? But don't go destroying the life of others when you do so, because I promise you in the end, it's going to come bite you. And I know I've said that, but it will. You need to like really think it through, you know, we, society needs to stop cuddling people and, 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 you know, gosh, I just finished reading the study that they did on puberty blockers. Not good. They found out and I will probably make another video regarding that because I got to read the article better. I just kind of perused it this morning, but damage is being done to trans kids with these puberty blockers, you know. Big study they did, and they finally have the results out, which, shocker, you know, you take synthetic medication, and especially in a growing, 
young individual, you're going to have side effects, you know. But these doctors that are pushing this are lying to parents, and parents don't realize that it's child abuse what they're doing, and they're going to hurt their child. Anyway, I want to finish doing this. It's hard to talk and cut cut apples. And so I do cut, a bun, cut an apple, put it in the oatmeal, and I cut a banana, put it in the oatmeal, and I take some frozen berries and frozen raspberries and put it in the oatmeal. But come on, guys, seriously. For those of you that are trans out there, do you think it's fair what's happening? Speak up. We need to start speaking up. You know, we need to like really be boisterous about this because if not, the rest of the world is going to think that all trans people are nuts. You know, and I know there's a lot of nutcases out there, but I know there's a lot of sane individuals that have done this because they were trying to alleviate their pain. And even though I don't believe that this is the solution, and I'll always say that, you know, I'll always say that this is not a solution. It's a temporary relief. It's like a Band-Aid. You know, sometimes you do have to put a Band-Aid to make the bleeding stop, to do whatever. And it's your life, right? <clears throat> but in my opinion, it's not a true solution because we've got to deal with the actual hardcore problems of what led us to believe that we were born wrong. What led us to have this pain that we don't like what we have seen in the mirror, so we wanted to change it. Whether it was abuse, whether it was trauma, what, whatever it was, it led us to this. But we have to understand that this is very limiting. You could only do so much. And as much as you want to wish away your, your gender and be something else, when you become at peace with who you truly are and know that you're doing this for a particular reason and find some sort of resolution, until you do that, you're going to continue to be miserable. It doesn't matter what you do to yourself, what hormones you take, you're going to continue to be miserable unless you just accept reality. All right, guys, I love you. Give me your thoughts down below. And remember to always love yourselves the way you are, even though you may transition, even though you may change yourself, love and respect who you are and understand why you're doing what you're doing. And if you're an athlete and you're thinking about transitioning, unless you decide to do some sort of trans team, I think that'd be pretty cool actually to watch transgender people compete against each other. Stay away from women's sport if you're a trans woman and an athlete and think you're doing something grand. You're not doing anything great. You're destroying women's sports. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.